Hey YouTube, I just wanted to give a bit of a channel update, sort of a weekend update I guess, with the happenings that happened over the weekend on my channel and with myself. Uh, as many of you are aware, I was on a hangout on Raw 5069's channel on Friday night and uh, he ended up booting me. And I have to give a thanks to Redline for hosting a Google Hangout for Raw 5069 and I to have an opportunity to sort of clear the air over what happened on that hangout. I, I, obviously felt a little bit disrespected but I think we did I think we did okay I think we cleared the air and uh, I think we have an understanding now uh, we had some laughs which is always good I don't foresee a lot of interaction between raw 5069 and myself because I think we came kind of came to an understanding and I don't feel like um, he's all that interested in who I am as a person and I'm not all that interested in being ministered to so um, you know I think we'll probably go our separate ways you never know though never say never at the end of the day um, all's well that ends well sometimes all's well that just ends <laughs> uh, and many of you probably have already figured out I did just get out of the hot tub so I apologize for the messy hair but uh, this also is going to be gone soon so don't be surprised or shocked the next time you see me and I've got a 3 8 inch haircut might not be next time but it'll be soon it's just about motorcycle riding season here and I uh, normally cut my hair down to three-eighths of an inch for uh, riding season. Um, my hair tends to be quite wiry, so if I put a helmet on this, it's going to look all kinds of stupid when I take the helmet off. So that nice short haircut is really great for that. Plus, it's cooler for working, of course, when, when the temperatures get up here. Where I live, it does get quite warm in the summer, and so it's nice to have that uh, air conditioning up there. I had a bit of a weekend off from working on my dad's place, which was kind of nice. Uh, I'm sure my brother agrees, too. I haven't talked to him yet this weekend, but I'm sure he's enjoying a weekend uh, away from doing that. We are going to be going back to it soon uh, because we've got my dad's memorial coming up in early May. And we're going to want to be able to tour some of his family uh, through the house. Uh, he had a lot of brothers and sisters that lived in the United States, so they're going to be traveling up here for his for his memorial, his celebration of life, and we want to be able to tour them through the house. So there's still a lot of work to be done there. Um, we'll do that soon. I wanted to give a personal shout out to Shake Your Booty, uh, who's had his his uh, his beloved pet, his dog, pass away. And uh, I talked to him a little bit, and I understand what that's like. I lost a, a um, well, actually, my dog was 15 years old, and if I if I'm not mistaken, I think his was 15 as well. And that's a long time to have a to have a dog, and and uh, they are the ultimate companion. They are just, th um, they are the very definition of unconditional love, and so I I fully understand uh, what he's going through, and I just want to say I'm still thinking about you, buddy, and uh, just stay strong, and just remember all the gifts that she gave you, and that wonderful gift that you gave her. Uh, by being there for her, you know, as as uh, as her life here ended, I think that is a gift, and they get so much comfort from us. They read off of us so much. They read off of our emotions, and the fact that you were able to be there for her and be present and be uh, just just be comforting for her that really truly is a gift. And I know that from uh, when our little fella died. <laughs> we have our big lab Great Dane cross now. Our last dog was a little Shih Tzu. And uh, both my wife's hands and mine were on him, you know, reassuring him uh, when, he, when he slipped away. And so uh, I think that really is a gift because I could tell how calm he was. He, he knew we were there. So, uh, again, brother, my, my, heart's, my heart's out there for you. Uh, contact me if you need anything. Finally, I'll just sort of give a bit of an introduction and an announcement of a series that's going to be coming on my channel very soon on self-esteem. I know I've threatened this for a long time. It's coming. Uh, it's here. And uh, as many of you know who've been with me for a while, I did suffer from some self-esteem issues when I was younger. Um, of course, I'm not, uh, I'm not a clear now. I, I certainly, like anyone else, suffer from the odd little bout of self-doubt and self-esteem issues, but uh, certainly a lot different than I used to be. I was sort of the kid in elementary, primary school that was ridiculed, that was picked on. And it started very, it started actually as soon as I joined school. I joined in the middle of grade two my parents had moved us here and wanted to sort of be pioneers and, and uh, did the, did the uh, wilderness living thing. So we didn't really have running water, didn't have opportunity to clean our clothes. My hair, as thick and wiry as it is now, was 
thicker and all over the place. My clothes tended to be dirty because I was always out wandering around in the bush and doing different things in the wilderness. And the kids took to calling me bush nigger. Keep in mind, in rural Canada at that time, there were almost no African Americans. This wasn't meant to be any kind of a racial slur on their part. Obviously, I'm not African American. Uh, they didn't understand the racial overtones of that word. They just were picking a word that they had heard and, and were, you know, were, were using it on me. Even when we got running water and, and all of that situation changed and I was able to take better care of myself, unfortunately the stigma stuck. It stuck right till graduation. And so as a young adult I was quite introverted. I certainly couldn't run a business, uh, you know, successful automotive repair business with over 350 clients. Or, or run a YouTube channel at that point. In fact, I didn't even like going into a bank or a store to do anything. I always felt like everyone was watching me, like I was beneath everyone, and at any moment somebody was going to, to say something. And it took quite a while for me to overcome that. And so, obviously I'm no psychologist. Keep in mind, everything you hear here is coming from an automotive mechanic. So take it with, ever, with whatever grain of salt is necessary. But what I do want to relay is some of the techniques that I used to raise my self-esteem and some of the things that I did. And, and hopefully if something there is helpful to even one person, I'd be, I'd, I'd be, I'd be ecstatic about that. Uh, we could maybe do some definitions here, and then if anyone has anything to add, please do so in the comments section. And then I'll decide whether or not to do a formal part one with the introduction and um, some definitions or whether I'll just go into a part two and, and start from there and consider this to be the part one. I'll just sort of decide once, I, once I've had a little bit of feedback if there's anything that I'd like to add and make it a little more formal. For me, self-esteem is the internalization of external messages. Essentially it becomes, you know, self-talk. And, and it can be in the positive or the negative. And I think either one has momentum. So if you're, you know, a very nurturing home and you're getting a lot of positive feedback, at some point that becomes internalized and you've got this internal dialogue. That, that raises you up, that's, that's a positive, motivating self-esteem. And of course, the inverse can be true as well. If you have parents that are very negative towards you or some other family member, some other, or as in my case, uh, school, you know, schoolmates, or any other source of, uh, of negative messages, at some point you start to internalize them. And you've got this internal negative self-talk, this internal dialogue that continues. You don't need the external sources anymore at some point because your internal voice will continue on. And so, of course, what we need to do is find a way to stop the internal dialogue and reverse it and, and replace it with positive messages of self-esteem. And again, I think that has momentum. It certainly did for me. Uh, once you start to come out of your shell and you start interacting with people and they start responding to the person that you are, then you're seeing reinforcement of the, the positive messages that you've been giving yourself and it becomes a bit of a self-fulfilling prophecy. So hopefully there's something there uh, that will be of use for somebody. I only have my own experience to relate. So uh, all I can say is, you know, I've gone from this very introverted person to someone who can run a successful business and have a YouTube channel and just interact with people on the street uh, like a normal person. Thanks everybody for watching. Have a great week.